Welcome, dear friends, to our time of scripture reading for Friday, July the 21st, 2023. I'm Brian J. Monroe, pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church in what is today gorgeous Kitimat, British Columbia. Absolutely stunningly gorgeous day up here. And we are going to, I'm going to read for you the choices of scripture readings for today as uh, listed in the Revised Common Lectionary for uh, year A of the three-year cycle in the season called After Pentecost, and this is the Friday before what's called Proper 11. We start with Psalm 86, verses 11 to 17. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol, that is hell. O God, insolent men have risen up against me. A band of ruthless men seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign of your favor that those who hate me may see and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Our first reading, beyond the psalm, it comes from the Old Testament, from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 9 to 17. The prophet writes, All who fashion idols are nothing, and the things they delight in do not profit. Their witnesses neither see nor know that they may be put to shame. Who fashions a god or casts an idol that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his companions shall be put to shame, and the craftsmen are only human. Let them all assemble, let them stand forth. They shall be terrified, they shall be put to shame together. The ironsmith makes a cutting tool and works it over the coals. He fashions it with hammers and works it with his strong arm. He becomes hungry and his strength fails. He drinks no water and is faint. The carpenter stretches a line. He marks it out with a pencil. He shapes it with planes and marks it with a compass. He shapes it into the figure of a man with the beauty of a man to dwell in a house. He cuts down cedars or he chooses a cypress tree or an oak and lets it grow strong among the trees of the forest. He plants a cedar and the rain nourishes it. Then it becomes fuel for a man. He takes a part of it and warms himself. He kindles a fire and bakes bread. Also he makes a god and worships it. He makes it an idol and falls down before it. Half of it he burns in the fire the other half he eats other half he eats meat he roasts it and is satisfied i so said over the half he eats meat he roasts it and is satisfied also he warms himself and says aha i am warm i have seen the fire and the rest of it he makes into a god his idol and falls down to it and worships it he prays to it and says deliver me for you are my god they know not nor do they discern for he has shut their eyes so that they cannot see and their hearts so they cannot understand no one considers nor is their knowledge or discernment to say half of it i burned in the fire i also baked bread on its coals i roasted meat and have eaten and shall i make the rest of it an abomination Shall I fall down before a block of wood? He feeds on ashes. A deluded heart has led him astray, and he cannot deliver himself or say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Our last or second reading and last reading for today 
is from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 to 20. That is the letter to the Hebrews in the New Testament. The author writes, For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and in all their disputes an oath is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. This is your eternal word, Almighty Father God. May you be praised for the generous provision of it to us, and may through the power of the Holy Spirit, you grant that it would be written in our hearts, in our minds, in our very souls, wherein it could achieve in us, can achieve and will achieve in us what is good and pleasing to you. We pray this to your glory in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our soon returning King. Dear friends, I thank you as always for taking a few moments out of your day to listen to the Word of God being read. Um, it's an important thing because most Christians only ever heard the Word of God as being able to read it is a relatively modern thing. I've placed the references for the passages I've read and the references for the alternate or uh, option two uh, readings into the description portion of this video so that you can refer back to them for yourself or maybe do the extra reading if you wish. There's uh, really only one difference which is the uh, the reading of Isaiah is replaced with a reading from Ezekiel. And until we can be together again, I pray that will be tomorrow to hear more of God's word as I read it. I bid you go in the peace of the Lord.